Well, both of our scripture passages today feature descriptions of people, how they are called or referred to, particularly as part of God's work in the world. You may know that in Spanish, the phrasing for asking someone's name translates to, how are you called? Como se llama? Como te llamas? I lived in East Africa in Uganda for five years, and I got used to introducing myself even in English with the phrase, I am called Brooke, a community identity. I am known as Brooke because that's what the community calls me. How the community knows us and speaks of us, about us, to us is important. An interview question is sometimes, how would your coworkers or supervisor or supervisees describe you? Again, what people are saying is important. I had a professor write a letter of reference for me when I was a student, and he gave me a copy of what he had mailed in, telling me I need to know what people are saying about me. In our gospel reading for today, the way the the sentences are constructed in Greek, of course, we receive the New Testament in translation, right, from Greek to English. The Greek can be understood to communicate that Jesus is asking the disciples what people are saying about him and then asking the disciples what they are saying to others, presumably, about him. So it's not so much a test for the right answer in the moment, who do you say that I am, but more of a report on what they've been saying. Jesus is interested in what his disciples by extension, including us, are telling people about him. So maybe one of the simple things we learn from this is we should be talking about Jesus. We speak about who Jesus is to us, who we say Jesus is for our sake to clarify who he is to us and for us, perhaps who he is given a set of circumstances in the world or our nation or our lives so that we can follow him accordingly, be part of what he's doing in that set of circumstances. We say who Jesus is for his sake in praise and thanksgiving. And we say who Jesus is for others, to show and introduce Jesus as we know him, to expand one another's understanding and relationship with Jesus. We receive witness by listening to and asking about the stories and experiences of others. How do others know Jesus and experience him? Like the tool in the moment for all ages, we may see something we hadn't seen before or be introduced in a new way. We may learn something, gain a different perspective on who Jesus is, who he could be for us in community with others. So the passage is about who people say Jesus is, the ways they talk about him and what they call him or the ways they describe him. A prophet, the Messiah. Then Jesus tells Simon Peter who he is, calls him the rock. Peter's insight that Jesus is the Messiah revealed by God in heaven, as Jesus says, and Peter's willingness to speak it out loud 
makes him a rock on which the church will be built and strengthened. Now, Peter is named the rock, but if we were to read not much farther in this chapter, just through the next little section immediately following this one in the Gospel of Matthew, Peter is called a stumbling block. The very next verses, Peter doesn't understand the mission of Jesus and how it will be accomplished, and he speaks against it as a hindrance, as Jesus says, to what Jesus is doing. A rock and a stumbling block. In some strange way, this is comforting to me. Jesus knew what he was getting into when he called Peter and the others all the way down to us to serve as the rock for the church. Jesus knew we are also sometimes a stumbling block to ourselves, to one another, to the good news of Jesus. The church is built on the rock and the stumbling block of human community. Sometimes we get it so beautifully right and sometimes so terribly wrong. And sometimes in the thick of it, it's hard to know the difference, which is one of the reasons why we need one another to be reinforcing who Jesus is, how Jesus calls us to live, is what faithfulness looks like. Like Peter, we keep trying our best, not holding back, responding to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and letting Jesus bring us back when we are in the wrong. We encounter Jesus through one another as a check or a supplement on who we know Jesus to be and how then we live. Today, we wrap up our series on ways of witness and our gospel verses invite us to speak about who Jesus is, to explore and talk about how we know him to be. The things we say serve as witness, showing people the love and grace of Christ. In addition to speaking about who Jesus is, we share and live his love and grace, his better way of being in the world. Some of us might be thinking with that last statement I made, good, yeah, I can live the love of Jesus, but it's hard to talk about it. But were you paying attention to the Romans reading? I memorized the first verse of this chapter from a young age, but even so, when I really hear it, it's a lot. I memorized it in King James, as will be clear. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Sacrifice your body and its reasonable service? Maybe this living the love of Jesus thing isn't the easier way after all. This language in Romans makes me think of athletic competitions where someone may exhort a teammate, sacrifice your body. At least in the kinds of good fun I am likely to engage in, of course they would be kidding. Though there are surely diehards who do sacrifice their bodies and expect their teammates to do the same. If we think Jesus' question about who we will say he is, it's hard. How about Paul's plea or appeal for us to sacrifice our bodies? or rather, 
present our bodies as living sacrifices. Thankfully, looking closely at this verse, the mercy of God is the basis for this sacrifice, not the goal of this sacrifice. We don't try to earn God's mercy by sacrificing ourselves, rather on the basis of God's mercy, as Paul writes. We are invited to be so devoted to living God's love and grace that we act it out in our bodies. Another look at the language of the verse. You might notice bodies is plural. A living sacrifice is singular. We are to be together a living sacrifice. Paul goes on to encourage people not to think of themselves too highly, and he uses the metaphor of a body for the group of people that follows Jesus together. The church is one body with different members and gifts, and we use our gifts for building up others, and we receive and celebrate the gifts others offer. We need each other. This is then a significant part of the sacrifice Paul has in mind. Sacrificing our bodies for the sake of the body. Joining our gifts with the gifts others have to form a community of caring and support, drawing closer to Christ and to each other. We need your gifts, your prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness. I've memorized it in the order it says uh, in our book of worship. It is, of course, you remember, right, on the back of your name tag, but we are focusing on the word that somehow Desert Skies has forgotten up to the present, witness, which has been, by the way, in our book of worship for at least a couple quadrennium. You know what a quadrennium is? Four years, we revise our things. Yeah, all that polity stuff. Anyway, we need you your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. This is then the mercy of God. We have each other on the journey of life and faith. I am so grateful for you, for the ways you witness to the love of Christ and the work of God among us, how you welcome me and help me refine my gifts, and offer and explore your gifts on behalf of our community in and beyond our congregation. We've been thinking about our own stories of witness throughout this series. I hope you've made efforts to bring your stories to mind, even to share them with others. May we continue to do that. Specifically, we are invited or challenged this week with how will you speak about who Jesus is? Perhaps the ways you're discovering and relating to Jesus now are different than they were for you. How can you talk about that? And then how will you utilize your body on behalf of the body? If your body isn't cooperating very well these days, how can you pray and encourage others? Find ways to support our collective witness. And let's not forget receiving the witness of others. Let's look for ways individuals or communities show the good news to us in word and deed. And Pat and Vern Walker will share with us now. 